Hello there. My name is Chris Pollard. I am known by the kids of Little Pieces Club Ministries as Mr. Chris. I'm a pediatrician who's been working at an academic institution for a little over 15 years. I'm a Bible nerd, a child of divorce, and soon to be an author. I created Little Pieces Club Ministries around the idea that when our hearts break, God can still make works of art from the broken pieces. I run small groups for children, teens, and I consult with uh, and support parents. I also give lectures and seminars on request. The content centers around the science of adversity, abuse, and neglect, or ACE science, and how biblical design patterns harmonize with it. Along the way, I discovered that Jesus' story, wrapped in the design patterns of the Good Shepherd and the Tree of Life, help us process, grieve, forgive, and reintegrate our souls after trauma. This helps us grow strong in solitude and community, leading us to love God, self, and others, which is what the greatest commandments or greatest blessings are telling us we should do. The podcast is geared to help parents understand their children's point of view and be a good shepherd through hard times. You can follow the ministry on social media in several different areas. Uh, on Instagram, we are at LPC Ministries. On Twitter, we are at Club Pieces. And on TikTok, we are at Little Pieces Club. In the YouTube video of this podcast, you will see QR codes for our Facebook group and our YouTube content. I love getting questions and comments. So now let's get into this week's episode. Our at-home format for small groups, for those of you um, trying to support small groups, um, starts with a fun and relaxing 15 to 20 minutes. Next time is followed by a snack or basically a meal time uh, where we go over prayers in a style that is very much like uh, examine of conscience. And then we go into the video lesson part of the application uh, following, uh, followed by a prayer to close the video and a fun and relaxing activity again for 15 to 20 minutes. So right now we're just looking at a slide uh, as I'm going through the presentation that reminds us to do something fun for 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully it does not involve a screen, although if you are having um, good fun, good clean fun with someone else, uh, the screen time is okay. And then just remember to set a timer so you come back. A little bit of wisdom about why we set up small groups this way is we are actually trying to demonstrate the concept of Sabbath keeping. And we'll get more and more into that as we go, but it is a time um, to regularly set aside work and that can mean a variety of different things, to simply rest and delight in the gifts that God has given us. So now we're welcoming people back from their fun time, and you will need journals, prayer templates, um, and then um, uh, go ahead and continue with the next um, activity. So now we're going into snack and prayer time or journaling, depending upon uh, the age group. Uh, the older kids, I tend to um, tend to encourage them to keep a journal uh, while we have activity sheets for the kids. So what you're looking at on the screen is our prayer template where we look over the, the week and we just ask kids to connect with the time that they have uh, felt uh, joyful and happy. Um, they have had a good amount of fun uh, and then invited them to bring forward their um, negative emotions like disgust, anger, sadness, and fear. And when we go through those, we also want to ask, did God feel close or did he feel far at those particular times? And this is reflective of a very ancient process called examine of conscience. And what it does, is it just helps reintegrate our souls. When we get a little far from God, um, we can realize that that's okay 
and we just simply invite him to come back. So if those of you are leading a small group session and you um, are doing this, that's the basic idea. And what we always want to do is present ourselves as very warm and welcoming, no matter what kids are feeling at a, a given time. And they may even try to provoke anger out of us. And so we just want to be aware and ready uh, to respond with patience and kindness. We are now moving on to Ask Me and Ask Each Other, which is uh, our time in small group where the kids uh, can ask any question of the small group leader about growing up in a divorced family. And this is the time uh, that's very valuable in your um, ability to write down things specifically to pray for for each kid and also send me questions that I can then put out in uh, future content that uh, helps everyone know um, how to answer uh, questions like that. This week's icebreaker question that's uh, much more specific is how has your favorite, what has been your favorite Christmas present? And this is just to get kids in the mindset that um, they have been given gifts in the past. Um, and hopefully the population that you're particularly dealing with is um, has experienced this to some extent. Um, you may have to alter it a little if you get the sense that uh, the kids maybe have not. Um, you can alter the, the question to your favorite present ever. Uh, generally speaking, some kids have, have gotten that. Um, and so that's just what the mindset that we're trying to get set for this episode. So as we go through the, the title slide, um, this is part five of the private Christian journey um, entitled Choosing to Ask God for Help. And we received permission to convert uh, or adapt a book called Sacred Rhythms by Ruth Haley Barton, uh, who runs a retreat center in Chicago for contemplative uh, prayer. Um, we received permission to uh, adapt that to this format, uh, and this is the first episode for that. Uh, we see a slide where it has the cover of her book, um, and I just uh, highly recommend it to anyone who just wants to grow in their faith and um, closeness uh, feelings to God. We're moving on to a summary slide again of the private Christian journey and the public Christian journey. It's a tree, um, which is a, <clears throat> it's an adaptation of the tree of life, uh, but we consider what happens below the soil and above the surface. Um, where roots will grow by feel, often encountering boulders and rocks, but yet they persevere. And at some point we figure out that we can live by choice. And then we can use that cho loyalty or we can use that choice to choose loyalty to God's ways and uh, ultimately Jesus. And when we do, that reflects the living water that the roots of the tree of life then are able to process and uh, grow tremendous uh, flowers and fruit um, for the community. And that is sort of a deep reflection of the tree of life. And so the next thing that we're looking for is we uh, expand the idea in the next slide of tasks that we are performing in solitude. So in our <clears throat> private journey, uh, we think about seeking, finding, and accepting this living water uh, that God provides to us through Jesus. And then in community, what happens next is we then give that living water to others. It's a very simple um, way to think through discipleship. Um, that's just, and that's a big word that I just consider 
glowing, growing closer to God, um, and then helping others do the same thing um, is a very simple way to think through discipleship. And so today we are focusing on the idea of seeking. Um, so uh, to kind of keep uh, in mind the path that we're taking, this private Christian journey, public Christian journey, we are seeking today um, what God has uh, to offer. We remind ourselves, looking at our character, that um, we can learn to choose at any age. And it's basically, um, uh, when do we become able to make a choice? And the answer is, it's when we realize that we can. And so the other other concept that is rooted in psychology uh, today is the rider and the elephant. And so the rider is able to choose to seek to know God. And then at the other end of that, we need to be willing to accept his free gifts. So there it goes the mindset today of this gift giving. So we can choose to seek to know God and be willing to accept his gifts gifts. So when it comes to asking God for help, my elephant on one side has trouble feeling comfortable seeking help or easily seeks help from God. And what this really is looking at, again, from a psychological perspective, is an idea of attachment. Attachment is the strong bond that a child um, grows between uh, him or herself and the caregiver. And this sets in between six and 18 months as kids realize that they are um, securely attached or have um, a variety of insecure attachments. And so the prevailing thinking is that that attachment can then affect how we look at authority and or things like God. So if you or anyone you know has trouble feeling comfortable with this idea of God, think about attachment and how reliable or unreliable were your parents in terms of too much attention, too little, neglectful, were they caught up in work, um, you know, and then try to separate in your mind the idea of attachment to parents to attachment to God. And we do have several things that we would need to work through, right? God, why did you let me have these parents that didn't do attachment very well? Well, the answer is he gave us the Bible to get to know him. And that's, again, choices that we can, we can make. And so choosing to get to know God with the hope that he has a much more secure attachment style for us um, is the question that we have in front of us. But <clears throat> we need to talk a little bit about how we process help. And so we look at um, two slides that for the kids, they might hopefully be able to relate to. And that is playing a video game and or cooking in the kitchen or doing some kind of task. And so we ask the kids, and remember, these are going to be older kids um, uh, maybe the five-year-olds may have a different impression and you may have to think about it, but they might actually get the idea if you're talking about like coloring or some type of project that they're doing. Because if you have some amount of ability or familiarity with doing the task, the question is, how would you feel if someone without asking just took over and helped you? And so we pause and have the kids reflect on this and share their feelings in that particular circumstance. And so most, most of those answers are kind of universally negative in some way. It was demeaning, maybe humiliating, or um, it did, did not uh, give a good feeling if someone just takes over helping without much of an acknowledgement of um, 
uh, of, a, of a request. So now we can separate the fact that God does not deal, uh, does not work that way. It's not his desire for our relationship to be him uh, forcing his way into our life every day. He's laid a path in front of us. And yes, if we are off that path, we may struggle. But that's far different from him picking us up and forcing us to be on the path. And so that is not how a good shepherd operates. A good shepherd will um, leave the flock to rescue the sheep. And the sheep knows his voice and desires to be rescued. So that's God's ideal relation, uh, relationship idea for us. So if we're concerned that he is going to force his, his will upon us, um, that is the, by far uh, not how God operates. So in Deuteronomy 30 verse 15, we see if you obey the Lord, if being the main uh, the main word here. And so that means that we do have this idea of choice that we've been talking about. And so God wishes for us to choose him to be our shepherd. And that's part of his character that we're trying to get across today. So in John 10, 11, what we see is, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And so we're just going to continue to expand that a little bit. And in a book that I read uh, by Timothy Laniac, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks, 40 Daily Reflections on Biblical Leadership, what he did is he went around the Middle East and got to know how shepherding actually works. And one of the things that he noticed was that shepherds were able to, for the sheep that were their favorites, feel their face in the middle of the night to, um, uh, if they were looking for that sheep, and they could recognize and identify that sheep by how that sheep's face felt. And so we can take that, that context of shepherding and say, God knows us that well. He knows us by just the feel of our face, by the feel of our hearts. So that's how well God knows us. And we just almost can't help but desire to have that presence in our lives helping us. And so what we're doing now is um, we can pause to have a group activity. And yes, this is going to be kind of an interesting activity. And what you can do uh, is maybe try different body parts. But um, the question is, can you be a shepherd? So we're going to blindfold one person at a time or choose teams if you have a lot of kids. And then take turns seeing how many kids can be identified by touching their face or their head. You could, an alternate way is to um, kind of line the kids up and then have them with their eyes open, feel their backs and shoulders um, and or hair, uh, and then blindfold them and see if they can identify their team based on that feel. And then everybody will get an idea of how easy or hard each team or this, this skill is to get to know how well a shepherd can actually identify their sheep. So have you figured out what God can help you with as your shepherd? This is the key uh, question for today's episode. So if sheep trust their shepherds and follow them, trusting that they will lead them to water and food and protect them, what we need to really do and what the focus of today is, we need to be able to frame this as a question for God. And so we may want several things out of sadness or anger. We might want uh, to think about parents getting back together. The kids might want to be left alone. They may want to never see a parent again. And they may be taking their anger out on a sibling. And sometimes it can be really hard to ask for help when we're feeling this way. So, But remember, God always works in love. And so we're just trying to guide the kids towards 
identifying these things that they deeply, deeply want, because that's an emotionally healthy task that they can, um, that they can perform. The scriptural story today is from Mark 10 uh, verses 46 through 52 about the beggar blind Bartimaeus. And so let's, well, I'm going to go ahead and read through the scriptures. So those of you that are maybe listening to this um, uh, don't need to get out a, don't need to get out a Bible. So uh, it starts with, and they came to Jericho and he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd. Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called to the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up to came and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. So the the part of this that kind of calls out is Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And so this is always one of those times where we need to meditate a little bit. And remember, the Bible is meditation literature. So we can ask, well, why is that detail important? And why was that detail included? And what other things might have been left out? And so when Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? He was basically, he already knew as a, he already knew as a, um, as God. Um, so there must be more to this task. And so the task of actually searching your heart and knowing what it is that you are asking for is very, very important and is the focus of today's, um, uh, today's lesson. So we're back to our picture of our, um, of our shepherd. And so what we want to talk about is sometimes, given all of our feelings, it's best to simply ask God for help and let him help in his way. And so I know it's we've been talking about coming up with the most specific thing, but if that's hard for any individual, it's okay simply just to ask God for help. So we can kind of work both sides of the spectrum. If we give kids some time in the small group setting, to think through what it is that they want, we and they really try and they can't, then our next step is to just simply ask God for help. There is a passage where uh, we're reassured by Paul that the Holy Spirit will uh, know the groanings of our heart and help. So we can at least rest in the shepherd's arms knowing he will help. And what we're looking at is a picture of a shepherd holding a sheep who is very much at peace within that shepherd's grasp. And then we can picture ourselves as that sheep. And this leads us into a journal prompt for the older teens, and that is uh, trying to answer the question of what do you want Jesus or God to do for you? And this is all about trusting God enough to choose to tell him the deepest desire that we have. And if that's not possible, then God, um, uh, then God will uh, help as he needs to. The other thing here is to yield, and that is let God know you can be patient. 
and that he is working on his own time and simply acknowledge that. So the next quick point that we make today um, is that we see uh, that we can look to nature for a little bit of wisdom about this process. And we're going through the idea of caterpillars that are feeding to become, uh, uh, to go into their cocoon and then transform into butterflies. So we see a couple of slides where we lead kids through the idea of the process of transformation, where the caterpillars eat. Then the next slide is monarch um, uh, uh, pupae, and, uh, which is a big word for cocoon. And then we suddenly see our uh, full-grown monarch uh, spreading its wings. And with all the color and the beauty that comes of this, we hope that kids will internalize this message into their own transformation um, as they ask God for help. And then we look at another picture of a butterfly. And, and then finally, the last one. And this is, again, a journal prompt to invite God to heal and transform the parts of their heart. And it's also an opportunity for God, uh, for us to be honest with God. And the next prompt is, God, I trust, or God, I don't trust you to help me, or God, I think, or I don't think I need your help. These are all very important and honest things that we can share with, with God. So a quick prayer before we get to Lectio and then to wrap up, and that is we can help kids through this and give them this prayer as well, which is, God, I need help. Please help feed me and heal me with your love and help me become what you know I can be. And reassure kids that if they're not ready, that they don't need to worry. God loves them and they can, they can imagine him walking next to them um, as a... Uh, a happy, joyful father just waiting for them to turn and ask him for help. And hopefully that will help them to uh, start to develop a much more secure attachment with the idea of God. So our Lectio Divina verse comes uh, from Jeremiah, 20, or Je Jeremiah 9, verse 4. So if people want to boast, they should boast about this. They should boast that they understand and know me. They should boast that they know and understand that I, the Lord, act out of faithfulness, fairness, and justice in the earth, and that I desire people to do these things, says the Lord. And so uh, you can uh, think through this verse, and we're going to read it again, but this time we're just going to, um, to focus on the fact that they should boast that they understand and know me. If people want to boast, they should boast about this. They should boast that they understand and know me, that they should boast that they know and understand that I, the Lord, act out of faithfulness, fairness, and justice in the earth, and that I desire people to do these things, says the Lord. So what we're focusing on is this idea that it's important in life to understand and know God, and that we have to be comfortable with his, with his idea in order to do that. So we are going to see how we're going to respond to this. And I would say that we've decided that we are going to know and understand God um, so that when we are telling others about it, we can be confident. So if people want to boast, they should boast about this. They should boast that they understand and know me. They should boast that they know and understand that I, the Lord, act out of faithfulness, fairness, and justice in the earth, and that I desire people to do these things, says the Lord. And then finally, in our fourth read through the Lectio process, we rest in the fact that now we know that we are justified in thinking that we need to get to know God and that he is safe. He is a safe concept for us to get to know and a safe person, if you will. So if people want to boast, they should boast about this. They should boast that they understand and know me. 
They should boast that they know and understand that I, the Lord, act out of faithfulness, fairness, and justice in the earth, and that I desire people to do these things, says the Lord. So anytime we do Lectio, if you're if you're listening to this podcast and another part of this strikes you, that's okay. Go ahead and do the Lectio process uh, with what it, what with what you're feeling today. So our closing prayer for this episode is as follows. Abba Father, we thank you for the time that we have with you. Help us feel our desire to be with you and near your healing love. Help grow our trust in your ability to lead us through life's journey. Help us feel how much we matter, like a single sheep is known to its shepherd. Help us find your words and love as our heart's food. We pray it gives us strength to transform like a butterfly. We may not know what you have in store for us, but we are learning to see your wisdom and trust your heart. Be with us each day and remind us of your presence as we walk with you as our shepherd. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the podcast. I hope this is helping you understand um, one aspect of discipleship that you can bring to your children or the children of your small group uh, that we are hoping that you start. Uh, through Little Pieces Club Ministries. So until the next episode, uh, please be blessed and uh, think of God often uh, in your day.